Hello, everybody. It's it's very late in Russia, so I'll begin the introductions right away to get us started. Of course, everyone is is free to come in. Um, on behalf of the Rudolf Steiner branch in Chicago, uh, we're really grateful to have Tatiana Pavlova speak for us uh, today uh, for the Holy Nights. I'll introduce her briefly and then just hand, uh, and then explain some technical things. Uh, she's an international speaker that has been on the path of anthroposophy for over 25 years. She also has her professional activities lying in the field of psychotherapy and art therapy. Uh, and uh, in order to uh, better secure things, because there's been some troubles with other anthroposophical uh, events recently, we're using uh, focus mode, which is something that Zoom themselves had recommended. And in focus mode, if, uh, if you haven't already been with us this uh, this month, um, you won't be able to see each other's videos until or unless a host enables it for people. So when the, the Q&A begins, uh, I'd ask that you just use the reaction button at the bottom of your screen to raise your hand if you have a question, and then we can call on you and enable your video. And thank you very much for the patience and understanding. And now I'll hand it over to Tatiana. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. So dear friends, uh, it's a real honor and a big joy for me to share this time with you. And what kind of time do we have? Of course, we know the name of this time, 12 Holy Nights. And it's really remarkable to feel, to experience not Holy Days, but Holy Nights. Why? It is so. And uh, if we look at human being, we can see that we are really different in day and in night. What do we have in night? In night, our inner being is not in the physical world. It's not in a, um, it's not in a, pres in, in a presence, in a physical consciousness. In night, we are at or in our spiritual motherland. So soul and spirit was astral body of every human being, any human being is in night um, in spiritual world. And most of us cannot keep consciousness in that time. But our inner being really needs to go to spiritual world. And there are special nights during the year, these holy nights, when spiritual forces are coming to us and we can experience spirit more in our clear consciousness. And because of this, we use this time to work together to, how, to increase our consciousness in accordance with the possibilities of time we have. And looking again at human being as at the being, we can see that we are really special beings. I hope it sounds really modestly, just special beings who has special possibilities, special uh, duties and special abilities also. And if we understand those abilities, we can create ourselves, ourselves. We can really become human beings. Of course, everyone on the earth, at least adult people, know that um, we live in space and in time. And there is real difference between time and space. But we are very special beings who can transform time into space and space into time. And we are doing this every moment. And if we understand this, we can 
really use our possibilities. So I would like to say something about this transformation, how we as human beings transform time into space. We know that uh, there is uh, different times of the year on the earth. And now you are in one time and I am in another one. And at every place on the earth, we have changing of times of year. And during spring and summer, our earth is sleeping and we have this mineral and um, plant existence. And during autumn and winter, our earth like a being is in awakening condition and it does not sleep. But in every moment of our existence, of our life, every human being has winter and summer in one moment. How it is when we are sleeping. Our physical and etheric bodies are in the bed, in the, of course, in, the, in a good condition, and they are in the same condition like all earth is during spring and then in summer. But our inner being, our soul and spirit, they are in conditions of winter. They are in spiritual world when we wake up. Winter comes to our or into our physical and etheric bodies and our astral body and our spirit, they get the same situation like all earth has in summer. So concerning time of year, we really transform time into space. All time of all times of year are in one moment in our body, which can be experienced like space body. We do the same in our life when we realize our karma. All our sheets has in them uh, some elements from our previous incarnations. So again, time is transforming by our existence into space. Working in space, living in our space realized activity, we also create future. So we transform space into the time. And this unique abilities, unique features of human beings, they make us like beings who has potential of freedom. Because of these special relations to time and to space, we really can create freedom. And how we can do this and why I try or, or I speak about freedom with the item of our, not lecture, but meeting, which is cosmic cult. What is connection between freedom and cult? And now we try to look at two polarities which we have in our human development. We know that our body lives in the conditions of necessity. We have a lot of things which are necessary for our physical existence. 
I will not speak about them. They are evident and everyone knows about this. But in our spiritual development, we also, during our history and nowadays, can be in, the, in that condition when we are sure that our spiritual development is also limited by necessity. In previous time, uh, it was the necessity which um, came from spiritual beings. Our ancestors, people who lived some centuries before, they were sure that humanity and every human being must and can do only those things which are prescribed, which are determined by spiritual being, by gods, by divine spirits. In our materialistic time, there are a lot of people who also are absolutely sure that our spiritual development is determined now by um, some materialistic things, such as abilities of our bodies, also some social conditions, also some social structures which are leading our um, education, our development, and so on. But this is only a kind of, not illusion, but this is one possibility to consider our existence and to consider the world. If even time and space are not determined uh, us totally, we can imagine that we also have a kind of real spiritual freedom. And how, how had we got it, this spiritual freedom? And we try to look at this through the lens of our thinking. Even 3,000 or two and a half thousand years ago, uh, people didn't think in such a manner which we can think now. And they were sure and they knew this and they could experience this, that their thoughts, they got like revelation from God. So they have to look up on heaven to have their thoughts. And there was an ancient cult when people, they sacrifice their thought they have during the year to the gods which have given them those thoughts before. And there was, of course, priests who led those cult which was connected with his thoughts sacrificing. Now we have another thoughts and another abilities to create thoughts. And we have this because in the turning point of uh, earth development, great spirit from the realm of Sun God has, or in, or yes, has incarnated into human body. Because of this, now we can really create thoughts. So heaven came or descended to the earth and impulse of Christ 
and spirit of Christ lives in every human body. So any soul which is coming to the incarnation can God can get sorry this possibility to create thoughts. And there are special time and year when we celebrate Christmas, when we celebrate that event which made us real real thinkers, which give which gave us the possibility to think, to create thoughts, not only reflect those thoughts. And between Christmas and baptizing, we have this special time when, as I said before, all spiritual beings reveal our th reveal themselves to us if we are able to experience them and we can feel this in atmosphere we can create thoughts concerning this we can also experience this with our feeling in uh, during these 12 holy nights, we can feel that it's not so easy to keep clear consciousness. Uh, I do not know how it is in USA, but in Russia, uh, in these last days of the new year, there is a lot of chaotic events. There is a lot of things physical things, financial, materialistic things which people would like to realize in life. And in the beginning of um, my, so to say, anthroposophical life, I could not understand why. But now I have a real experience that those chaotic things come into existence because it's not so easy to keep clear consciousness when such a big spirits could be experienced. So not everyone is able to keep consciousness, not to be involved in those chaotic events, which are, which makes our consciousness more narrow. But anthroposophy gives us special knowledge which can help us to experience spirit in nature, to experience spirit in our everyday life. Looking at outer world now or in another day, we can see how spiritual forces reveals themselves in nature, in all changing and creation and development we have in nature. We can see in any phenomena of the world how spirit comes through beauty, how spirit comes through life, how spirit comes uh, through um, horrible things and through death. And we can find revelations of spirit also in ourselves. And if this anthroposophical knowledge and our intention to experience spirit, we combine with the innermost parts of our will, we can come to cult. And what is cult? This is a kind of 
religious ceremony, a kind of worship, but it can be not only in religion. If we try to find spirit outside in the world, in nature, we also can come to the moment when we can find spirit in ourselves. And if we really can understand that we are spirits, in that moment, it start to become really reasonable to understand what is our duties as spirits. What is our abilities as spirits? And what is our place between other spirits? And 12 holy nights is really good time to try to recognize this again and again this every year. Spirit between spirits. We can consider human being in such a way when we are able to see that we can create some things. And what do we can create? First of all, we can create our relation to the world and our relation to other people and to other beings. I mean now just beings in nature and also beings in spirit. How do we create this in our everyday life? Looking at our condition, conditions of our existence, looking at our possibilities and necessities, we can try not to divide all the world into the pieces, into small pieces like um, our natural science does. I doesn't feel something against any science, but in our everyday life, we can try to see all things together. We can try to, um, how to, to wide, to make our consciousness wider, to increase our consciousness to understanding of the world. And if we look, for example, at nowadays events, and try to experience that events we have now are also influencing as a cosmos. And these events are also uh, coming out of cosmos. And in this case, we really can experience that we are part of all cosmos. Anthroposophy gives us big knowledge and a lot of, how to say, possibilities to get new knowledge about cosmic life and about natural life. And we can also use possibilities to live in art. Art which we can consider like revelations of our feeling realm. So in our thinking, we can create our thoughts. In our feeling, we can unite our world experience through senses with abilities of matter, which we use for art. 
And if science and art are together, in this case, our thoughts and our feelings are also together. And if then we combine this with our innermost real impulses, we, and if we direct all this to spiritual world, we have God. We know that there are different types of religious cult now, and they also contains, um, contain elements of art, elements of knowledge, and this religious service. Rudolf Steiner also said that if people are studying anthroposophy in their branches. Our souls, if you are doing this, our souls create a kind of altar for the reverse cult. And this reverse cult, this is a cult for or, or of spiritual beings who can do this because our thoughts and feelings are directed to the spiritual world. But there is also a kind of cosmic cult, which Rudolf Steiner described in lectures, um, devoted to relations between star world and human beings. Cosmic cult means that we try to live in accordance with cosmic development. And in our days, it means that we try to use that part of our will, which could be used for our free, for, for our freedom, for our free deeds. It's very important to understand that we have this part of our will which are not involved into activity of other spiritual beings. Like spirits, we have special will which we can use for creation. And if we do not use this will, it becomes uh, the basis of different kinds of destruction. And if we do not use our will forces, which can be used only for freedom, those forces will destroy us and also destroy the earth. And we have a result of this destruction in, in our day's life. Uh, I wouldn't like to give example of destruction. Everyone knows about this, but I would like to say some more words about this experience, which can be called a cosmic cult. When we feel these free forces, free spiritual power, which everyone has in his or her soul, we also can feel impulse to create something new. And how we can recognize this impulse in everyday life. We can find this impulse in our ideals when we are young. We can find this impulse 
in our social abilities when we are in the middle age of our life. And we can experience this impulse in totally new possibilities to see the world when we start to become older and older. Every year, every day gives possibility to see more and more spirit into the world. And when we look at time of our life, when we look at the times of year, and when we try to see the changes which comes to our life every day, we also can experience this mood of development. And mood of development is mood of creation. And this attempts to live in accordance with cosmic development could be uh, realized every day. But the best time for its realization we can find in feast time, in this main feasts of year. And of course, in a time when we live in now. Again, to this moment, cosmic cult is those cult which is possible for every soul when human soul experiences itself like spiritualized one. What does it mean? I am spirit. It means that I am responsible for life I have. I say I, maybe in Russian tradition. I cannot say you or any human being. So now I speak, I try to speak like a human being, not like Tatiana. So spirit means creative possibilities. And ability to create means responsibility. And in the hard moments of life, when one feels that he or she is spirit, one can experience this special power which unites himself or herself with cosmos creation. In uh, during holy nights, high spirits have great possibility to experience our thoughts and feelings, especially feelings which we have during all the year. And if we, like spirits, like human beings, try to open our hearts to cosmic development, if we do this, we will try to feel a kind of gratitude to those spiritual beings who created us, who gave us all abilities we have also now uh, on the earth, who gave us um, these specific abilities to transform time into the space and space into time. And if we really try 
to direct our soul abilities to all cosmos now. We really work uh, in accordance with cosmos development. It's not so easy to speak about those things, even in Russian, for me. It's even more hard or difficult uh, to speak about this in English. And I really hope that you can perceive uh, those, how to say, heart warmth, which I wanted to put into my world. Uh, this warmth uh, is to, this warmth I would like to direct uh, to other human spirits who uh, are looking into the cosmos now. This warmth I would like to direct, to address uh, to spiritual world who gives, or I, I don't know who or what, maybe who, who of course, who gives such a big abilities and possibilities to us. We know that we have a lot of necessities, also necessity and demands of time. But we also have possibilities of time and possibility to be spirit in physical body, possibility to develop freedom being here on the earth. Those possibilities could be considered like a great gift, great gifts from spiritual world. In um, the first of Holy Nights, I also spoke about 12 Holy Nights with some people in Russia and uh, who lives in far north. And one of them asked me how we can speak about those things we are Zoom. Some anthroposophists, she said, uh, are sure that when we use computer, aramanic beings stay between us. But we can consider that in Zoom or in other things we have in the world from technique, we also got possibility to be more close to each other. And it's really great possibility to speak about those things being on in different time, in different space, and nevertheless together. And I am very glad that all of you are here and I am very thankful that I have such a great possibility to speak with you about those or these really high things. And the main maybe thing is that in every moment of our life, we can direct our attention to the spirit. And it's really great moment in human development when we are still on the earth and our planet is still alive and in the same time we are spirits who have more and more of possibilities of freedom 
with every year of life, with every year of development. I think that it's enough now to speak for me. And if you have any questions or concerns, please, it would be really nice to hear you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Tatiana. Uh, yeah. Um, please, if you have questions, uh, I, I recommend using the reaction button at the bottom of your client to indicate a raised hand. Uh, all right, I see Leon. Um, yeah, feel free to speak. And please speak quite slow, for my understanding. Um, hello, and hello. I'm used to speaking slowly. I, I came from England, and that was the first thing I had to learn in America was to slow down with my speaking. So I appreciate you being so careful with your English. And I just want to mention that I noticed how often you use the word possibility. Not a criticism. It's like, for me, Christ is the possibility of possibilities. Mm -hmm. He created this freedom, which is possibilities for us, with us. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. In, in my English, I really tried to find, in my English thinking, to find different, different difference between possibility and opportunity. And uh, um, possibility in my understanding is something which we can use, which we are able to use. And we can also create for ourselves. So thank you. Thank you. I see a hand up for Jeanette. Yes, thank you very, very much. I was very touched. <laughs> by your words. And um, I'm so happy because you mentioned uh, that we can develop our freedom, freedom also because there's a lack of freedom at these days, you know, and um, I feel that way that there's a lack of freedom because if, I feel very lonely at the moment in this world, actually. I don't recognize a lot of my friends in their way of thinking. But in every case, um, I was also very touched about if we do not use those forces um, from creativity, from doing art, um, that they will destroy us and uh, the earth. So it is a destruction. Um, I didn't knew that it was so serious, you know, because I'm, I'm an art therapist and I don't really do anything with it. And my friends always say, you should do something with it. And it was really an eye opener for me. So I thank you so much for that. And um, the last thing I was thinking was, um, uh, our, what you said was our, our, our spirit comes alive to horrible things and that, that was also very touching for me to hear because um, yeah, I think we live at the moment uh, in, in, in terrible things and a lot of dead people and so, um, yeah. So thank you so much for all this uh, eye openers for me in every case. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. And thank you very much for your Thank you, Tatiana and Jonathan, for allowing these meetings to take place. Uh, something uh, you mentioned, Tatiana, resonates within me very strongly because as a poet, I uh, 
pay attention to what I'm doing, both in space and time. But something you said has made it important for me to say now that nothing new can be created unless we are at the same time aware of what is the realities outside of ourselves and the inner spiritual uh, essence that we have within ourselves. Unless we can allow these two elements to communicate, to um, really flow together in our soul, nothing true of a spiritual impact can be created. We can just carry on repeating um, the same uh, actions, mindless actions like in everyday life, um, but nothing new that has a positive impact can be born out of isolation. And because we are forced in this day and age to live more isolated, it becomes even more important to maintain this awareness of the outer reality, be it nature or um, uh, social situations and the inner core that we carry within ourselves. So thank you, Tatiana, for allowing me this opportunity to share with you this thought that has been um, accompanying me for a long time. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I forgot to mention for, for people on the phone, if you want to raise your hand, I believe star nine will do that. Uh, are there any other questions or comments? Uh, Victor? Victor, I see your raised hand. Would you like to speak? All right. Uh, any, if you're trying to speak, Victor, we can't hear you. Um, you should be able to unmute. So, dear friends, if no question more, I think it's a good time to finish because um, now it's almost 11 p.m. in Russia, at least at that part of Russia where I am. And this is one of the holy nights and real nights here, night here. And it's so important to keep day consciousness of our being, to keep day consciousness of our intentions and to keep day consciousness uh, of possibilities and opportunities also we have in our life. And I am really thankful that anthroposophy is in my life. I am really thankful for people who share with me this way of knowledge. And I hope that our today meeting gave new possibility for reverse cult for spiritual world. And thank you that you shared this time for me. Thank you for your listening, for your attention, and also for your actions. I wish you a lot of light and warmth 
during corona nights and then during all next year. And I hope that our spiritual connection will be, will continue in our, so to say, physical connection. And that all those isolation conditions will, will come to their finish. It won't disappear. It would be really crazy to say they will disappear. No, we have this because there are some reasons we, uh, to have them. But I also hope we have enough power to deal with this situation and to develop into the future. So have a nice holy nights and nice life. Thank you. Thank you.